Are you ready to record? Record it? Well, welcome back to Viking Park for the second half here. We have a game on for sure. 7-3. With me today is Louise Cook Burrows up in the commentary box. Thanks again, Louise, for joining me. Great to be here, Karen. And down on the sideline, we have Callum Richardson. Callum, g'day. Our position down there, mate, for the second half. Ready to go. Mitch Connolly restart for Big Garland. As they take the lead into the second half. Royals, well, they'll be really disappointed if they don't have the lead. Which is nice underfoot today. It's beautiful conditions. There is a uh, consistent breeze blowing. Affected the goal kicking of Pedro Rolando. The Royals boys had uh, had two, three attempts at goals before they were able to get their one across the line. So really they could be up 9-7 at the moment. It's 7-3 to Gungalan. And they have a chance to extend that to 10-3. A converted try lead would be... Well, Quite something in a game, a low-scoring game here at Viking Park, Louise Burrows. Yeah, that would be. I think um, they'd be happy to get at least um, that converted try um, up over Royals at this point early in the second half. Luke Duffy's kicking has been on in the first half. He was drop kicking it from the 22. Had about three drop kicks that all went 50 metres on the fly. One of them crossing the dead ball line at the other end. And this one just going to the right. That breeze playing its part again here. So the score remains 7-3 and the 22 dropout will continue. Playing an aerial game of rugby here this afternoon. Tight footy as was yesterday's major semi-final. Vikings earning their ticket to the grand final and a chance to redeem themselves after losing last year after the siren. This restart from Pedro Orlando, excellent. Yeah, that's a great kick. Finding uh, the touchline just on the 10 uh, in Gungalan's half. We have had the one injury this afternoon. Nick Dobson was replaced for Gungarland early on with what looks like a calf injury. He's been icing his calf on the sideline and will likely not be back in this game. Gungarland have a bit of a strike weapon still to include later on this afternoon. Alex Small remains on the field at hooker, uh, but Brumby Josh Man Ray, and uh, he's got a couple of Wallabies caps actually. Uh, will be included at some point in this game. He's been named on the bench for the Eagles. As Rocky Aloha needs a little bit of attention in back play and a penalty awarded to Gungarland will get them into attacking territory. 7-3 the score is. 36 minutes to go in this minor semi-final. 
at Viking Park. Brought to you by Club Lime. Thank you to our sponsors, as always, for making this happen. Hans Superdry, the sponsors of the uh, the entire competition, the John Aden Cup in 2016, and the referee's just blown time off for a moment as Rocky Aloha gets a bit of attention. Yeah, he's not looking very good in uh, back play there. No, a few runners getting out onto the field now, and the referee just checking in on him to see what's going on. I would suggest just based on the way the trainer is working his leg, might be a bit of cramp, which is what we can hope for. And the breeze just dropping off a little bit, and we've had sunny conditions for the last 10 minutes or so, and looking out behind us over the Brindabellas, it looks like that's going to stay mostly the case for the rest of the afternoon. No rain expected which we said in pre-game was a, a a nice little piece of royalty for both of these sides who've played a number of their games this year, including both their clashes in, uh, in mud. One game, I remember, you couldn't tell who was who. In, yeah. the, in the Fords, at least, as we come out the back and Rocky Aloha to have a hit up and good tackle there from Steve Sioni, but... Rocky with his power just continues on. Good to see him back up off the turf. A short pass to Dobson gets him away up to the 22 metre line and Kingarland continuing their momentum from that try in the final uh, moments of the first half. Pat Tuidraki now with a hit up. Cleared out by James Dargaville. And Chris Coyle for Kingarland. Now they come back to the grandstand side of the field for Letty. Garland looking strong, putting a couple of phases together. Royals muscling up. This game means everything to both these sides. The loser is out. They will miss out on the rest of the year and their finals hopes will have to carry over to 2017. <coughs> the winner gets to play Queenbie and Whites next week right here at Viking Park and we will be bringing you that game then as well. My name is Kieran Deck and you can have your say on today's game using the hashtag JIDC16. We apologise to our viewers who are hoping to watch the first half and with some technical issues out of our hands we weren't able to bring it to you but we are on now and um, my technicians are suggesting that it's all good so fingers crossed we won't put the mickey on it by talking about it too much more but that's what's happened and we are on now as Luke Duffy lines up another penalty attempt. He missed his last one from a bit further out. This one routine for a first grader. And it's good. Another three points added to the total for the Gingalan Eagles. And they lead 10 points to three. 34 minutes left on the clock. Cookie, a bit of work for your side to do here to get themselves back in the match. What, uh, what do you think they're going to look to here? Are they they're going to strike early or, or build pressure? I think they'll build some pressure, but um, we just need to have some possession. Um, you know, get the ball back here from Gungarlan and um, hopefully build that pressure and put some phases together. But Gungarlan. And knocked down at the back there, Royals. With the turnover, Gungarlan continue to work their way out of their half. Ben McGee linking with James Dargaville out there who's one-on-one -on -one with Lousy Taliuli who puts enough pressure on him to ensure that he puts the kick on. Ben Johnson backing himself with a chip and chase but there are too many Eagles there and they clean it up. The Blue Bag is just tackling just past the halfway line. Gingarland back in possession. Mitch Connolly with the left step taking it towards Jason Swain over the top with that tackle.
position, yeah. Louise Burrows. Yeah, it was. You know, we had a bit of an overlap out there and I could see what Tom was doing, but um, it was just well read by um, Gungal and Eagles there. And Connolly, an experienced campaigner, he just flew away there, didn't he, Callum? Looks like we don't have Callum Richardson on the sideline for the moment. Let's see if we can get our comms back with him as Luke Duffy lines this one up. Wing back in the underdog's favour now. Royals to come from behind 17 to 3. Uh, 30 minutes left in this game here at Viking Park. Royals looking to defend their premiership. Similar thing happened, I can remember, last year when they were playing West in this very same. Another short kickoff attempt by Rolando earns them the penalty at the breakdown and good effort from the forward pack there, Royals. Yeah, it looks like they've got the feet of this scrum here and um, we'll definitely be looking to uh, get ball in hand and um, get some points on the board. Seen some fantastic work, especially last week when Royals played Vikings at Phillip Oval. They... Uh, they weren't scared to throw it wide and it paid off for them on a number of occasions and that sort of effort hasn't been really backed up at the breakdown by the Fords yet. They've not been able to draw those Fords into the breakdown from Gingalan's side and, and force that overlap, which is why we've seen those mistakes on a number of occasions, including that one that cost them seven points just moments ago. And this time, Rolando finds a gap, and he has in the inside, Lousy Taliuli, but in cover defence comes Ben McGee. And they're reeling now. Offside was Ben McGee, and that's the call from the referee. And blowing time off now. He's reaching for his pocket. We may see a card here, yes, yellow card given to Ben McGee for interfering behind the play. Quick tap comes from Brent Hamlin. And we have a little bit of a melee here on the right-hand side. Not happy, tempers flaring as we expected for this match. Both these sides have worked supremely hard to get here in this position for the minor semi-final. And it's, it's not fair if you're from either camp, if you're going to have to go home today. So fighting with everything they've got both these teams and the advantage is with Royals now they've got the momentum they'll be unhappy that that ended in a brawl because Hamlin wanted a quick restart and that's what started at Louise Hamlin passed it to McInerney and he bumped into Ben McGee and a bit of a miscommunication uh, McInerney not able to catch it and not happy with where Ben McGee was no I think um, he probably wasn't really expecting McGee to be there and um yeah, wasn't happy about that. I think um, McKee just needs to now get off the field before uh, something else may... Yeah, a couple of huddles Hello. here as the, the referees get in their own little huddle. A conversation between them on the penalties that are going to be handed out, if any. Let them do their job as both camps regroup and Gingala now... Looks like they're going to have to defend their line from short range. Ben McGee to sit just in front of us here. Have we got you down on the sideline, Callum? Have we got you there, Callum? I think we've got him back now. Comms not working again. Apologies for that. As the decision committee breaks up and looks like we're going to have a few chats here. The referee bringing over skipper Mitch Connolly. And Ben McGee just coming back onto the field. Looks like he was summonsed. Ben McGee was handed a yellow card before that brawl for interfering. And there is a red card now off the back so McGee won't be coming back into this game the club captain penalized for 
his effort at that brawl and uh, he'll have to front the match committee during the week and if Gungahlin win this game and go on to the preliminary final. So Ben Johnston will find touch now, attempt to find touch and Royals to give Gungahlin perhaps their, a taste of their own medicine with the Rolling Mall earning the first try of the afternoon just before half time. Royals behind 17 to 3, 28 and a half minutes left on the clock here at Viking Park. You are watching the minor semi final. The winner of this game goes on and keeps their seat in the live. The loser will be disappointed for another year as Connor McInerney attacks the left side of the ruck, but a fantastic tackle there around the legs stops him from getting over the line in short range, and there has been a whistle blown. and I think a knock-on, perhaps, by Royals there. I think I saw Matty Hogan, the referee, put his left arm out. Oh, no. A scrum has been called. I think my interpretation, I, we're interrupted here by Royals players from our line of sight, but I think the referee was signalling for an offside there as a replacement is made. Yeah, this will be a good test for the Royal Scrum. Five metres out, just to see what they're capable of. And that replacement being made, I would assume, to make sure that Scrum is strong enough. Mitch Ward coming from the field, the Scrum half. So we'll have a look at what that's going to entail and how the halves will shape up for Gingarland. They get that extra man into the Scrum. Yeah, well, McGee's a big loss for um, Gingarland. He is an impact player. He has this ability to see lines that others can't and now they haven't got their two starting locks on the field. Jake Helgerson, who we chatted to in the pregame, was uh, has been injured and will miss the rest of the season. He's out with a knee injury and disappointed not to be playing today. A couple of rounds ago he linked with McGee in this massive break and a pop-up try that got them the win over Vikings right here at Viking Park. Royals continue with the uh, loose head. Re just resetting that. Matt Hogan. Remember, you can drop us a line and let us know where you're watching from today in the uh, minor semi-final. We've got the hashtag JIDC16, which we're monitoring. And let us know where you're watching from. Gungarland Scrum has been dominant this season, especially with those two Dobson brothers. They're missing one of them after he was injured in the first half, but still they're able to hold this nice and strong. The penalty goes Royals way. A quick tap from Steve Sione. He saw a gap, and we did too, but he couldn't get there. Did he, though, in the end? There's cheers from Royals camp. I think he's over the line. Not held up, up, says the referee. Not over and not down. So Royals will retain possession and get another opportunity. Looks like they may be able to get even closer to the, the uprights if they can convert this serious period of momentum. Kangalan were looking the goods about 10 minutes ago. Well, that was great defence by them. You know, Steve Sione, he's hard to stop. Um, Absolutely. Um, at such short range there. And, um, yeah, but that was a great tackle to hold him up over the line. Kangalan will really have to just hold this scrum because I think if they um, uh, create a penalty, um, things aren't going to go their way. So... Royals at the moment are dominating the um, scrum. Twenty-five minutes left on the clock here at Viking Park as another cloud comes over and puts the ground in shadow. We are on a chilly day here in Canberra. Steve Sione has the ball at his feet and he picks it up one hand and gives it off to Brent Hamlin. Can he get over the line? Not quite. There's cheers from Royals crowd and there's a knock on. It's actually cheers from Gingarland's crowd because he just let go of it as he went over the top. There was a no concern for his welfare. Brent Hamlin has went over. There's been a wave from the referee. Everyone's up off the ground. A reminder that uh, only moments ago, Gungarland lost one man for the rest of this match. Ben McGee, red-carded after a mini-brawl. 
pretty much in the same position we're setting down for this scrum and can Garland bring on their star replacement, Josh Man Ray, to enter the field? And Alex Small will be removed from the hooker position. That is a big get for Can Garland, welcoming back the two Brumbies, Josh Man Ray and James Dargaville today. Let's look at how their scrum fares. They've lost the last few, as you mentioned, Cookie. But now with the, um, the added extra expertise, they'll need to work their way out of their red zone. Yeah, I think with um, Nick Dobson coming off early, um, having Bongo on there will uh, help just with a bit of experience across in the front row there and um, help Gungahlin in these scrums. And the replacement there in 21 is uh, James Lovell. Uh, Anthony Dawes, sorry. Anthony Dawes is wearing the 21 today and he's fed that scrum. He's come on for Mitch Ward and given it away to Connolly, the other Mitchell. Pat Tuidraki runs an inside line, makes sure that the Gingarland Eagles stay well away from that sideline and Connor O'Byrne with the ball now. He's running towards the Royals' advantage line. They haven't been able to get back to a kicker to clear it out. Here they go now. Garner on the boot. Lands right on the 10 metre line and uh, Ben Johnson's there to clean it up and take it himself. He shows and goes to Talia Uli who has to be flat footed on the receiving end of that offload. They go just short of the 22 now and given back there was a knock on that the referee spied in the breakdown and again the Royals heads four. They will be bitterly disappointed that they haven't been able to put points on the board in the last eight minutes, Louise. Yeah, they will, actually. And uh, Ben Johnson's just gone down after being tackled then, making that run. So hopefully uh, the skipper's all right for um, Royals. But, yeah, I think um, we just can't catch a break at the moment. And um, hopefully they're not getting too frustra frustrated with themselves, the boys. And... Um, you know, I think Gungahlin, though, they're, they're playing well. They're putting Royals under pressure at the breakdown and then the mistakes are coming. And I think on the sideline we have our sideline eye down there. Callum, are you with us? Yeah, I'm back with you now. Great to hear. Mate, um, an intense final last 10 minutes or so. How's it looking from the sideline? Yeah, the last 10 minutes have been pretty full on, whether you go for Royals or Gungarlan. I was down in the Gungarlan camp for the last 5, 10 minutes, and it was getting very intense. The crowd's getting very vocal, and the team looks very, very fired up. If Royals are going to mount a comeback, they need to do it quickly. 23 left on the clock, and 17-3 the advantage. Gungarlan scoring at around the 30-minute mark. Royals have had the field position for... The last seven minutes or so, Gungarland playing with one man down for the rest of this game after Ben McGee was red carded. And Gungarland just doing enough so far to keep their advantage. Ben Johnson, the skipper, looks okay after rubbing himself off and getting back up into the fullback position. Good to see. The lights starting to come on here at Viking Park on a chilly Canberra winter's afternoon late into July the last day in fact as we pass off to James Dargaville takes three of them to stop him he gets an offload to Rocky Aloha Rocky wanted to run into Staniforth well Staniforth wanted him to run into him but he stepped around him Dargaville with another run backing it up and a pick and go and Josh Man Ray with his first touch of the ball this afternoon Tom Staniforth making another tackle there. He's working really hard out there today. He loves his Royals and the kick here, finding turf and a favourable bounce for the Gungarland player in back play. There was Andy Barrell, but he couldn't quite hold on to it. Ben Johnson puts it around the corner. And we're going to come back for a penalty on the back here. A high tackle ruled by the referee. And Brent Hamlin will search for touch. This is the brand of footy Royals play, isn't it? They throw it around and they chance their arm when there's broken play and they try and get those lucky tries, but it hasn't come off so far this afternoon. Yet to cross the chalk. This kick from Ben Johnson not finding the sideline. It doesn't matter, though, because there's a knock-on. Andy Barrell will be disgusted with himself on the back of that. That one just coming out of the breadbasket and spilling over the 22-metre line, and there'll be a scrum right 
deep into Royals territory. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's loud underneath us. The grandstand rumbling to life on Royals' side. Stomping their foots in support of their blue baggers. One team goes home today wondering what could have been in the John A. Dent Cup in 2016. As Folletti gets ready to come onto the field there on the sideline. Callum, he's just walked past you. Yeah, it looks like they might be getting Folletti on, some fresh legs in the front row. You know, he's got some real strike power. And um, I think... Yeah, you there, you know, we've got uh, another technical issue trying to get on to our sideline commentator down there. We'll let him try and figure that out for the moment. Looks like he's giving the thumbs up. He can hear us now, mate. Callum? Yeah, I can hear you now. Loud and clear. As we've got a scrum feed by Brent Hamlin. It's come away to Rolando. He had Bodman on the inside, but gave it away to Swain instead. Goes himself with a pick and go, but a big hit on Rocky Aloha's behalf. Met a truck there, did Rolando. He'll be shaking that one off. Staniforth, flat-footed. Steve Sioni at the ruck there. Doesn't go himself. And for Lele Sioni now. Given one away to Paragelli, and he's tackled. Yeah, some good defence by Gungarland. They here. are coming up nice and fast out of their advantage line. Ben Johnson has nowhere to go. Another example of what we're talking about there. Filele Fale Sioni now pick and go. Royals need to mount some pressure here and get and points on the board. With 19 and a half minutes left on the clock, they have a hefty margin to cut down and... It's been stolen, as you said, Louise. Josh Manway, Ray giving it away to Pat Tuidraki, trying to draw those two men in and took a little bit too long to get it away to Andy Barrell. And it's been spilled. There was a penalty at the breakdown for not releasing. That's a result of pressure from Royals' side. Fantastic effort there, and they'll get another chance. Royals won't be ruining their opportunities if they can convert this time. Yeah, they really need to... Um get over the line very soon to be in contention to come away with this game but Gungarland just keep putting them under pressure their line speed is um, really making it hard for Royals to get over the advantage line and a couple of replacements down there on the sideline Callum I believe uh, JP Fenneketau has come on the field for Gungarland and for Royals for Letty so a couple of big boys entering the fray and Joel Penders come off for Royals that's it, a lot of big boys coming onto the field. going to be a defence to stand from Gungarland. Can Royals finally break the defence or will Gungarland betray him once again? And the mall is the option here off the back of the line out and it's been broken down. Coming off the right hand side is Connell McInerney. He had one on the outside. Seth going, still trying to get over the line. Did he get there? There's cheers from Royals side. There's a flag in the air. Confusion reigns. Great defence by Gungarland. They I think did. They took it. him out there. Just they outside. did, they got him out and that's the flag and we'll have a scrum back in the centre. The referee bringing it in a few metres, fantastic effort. No, we will have a line out, my apologies for going out. So, Josh Man Ray with his first line out of the afternoon for Gungarland. And Royals unable to find a way through again. Seth going got oh so close there a moment ago. Good defence from Rawls there. We would have been hoping that he could have got him back over the line as Dobson brings it away from the ruck and held high by Staniforth doing a good job. They may get a turnover here. Yes. Wonderful effort from Staniforth on Dobson to keep him up high and drag him backwards even though they... Forfeited some ground. They won the ruck and Royals another opportunity. We're getting in close to double figures in terms of chances for Royals to put the points on the board here, Louise. That's right. And it looks like uh, Michael Andrew Copsey is coming onto the field for Steve Sioni, is it? Yeah. yeah, so both number eights, both starting number eights off the field now. JP Fenneketau for Gungarland is on. And Rocky Oloa, who made an impact earlier on in the first half, has been given a rest. So Steve Sioni getting claps as he leaves the field. Sucking them in there, Callum. Was he? Yeah, 
Yeah, he was sucking them in. He's had a big game, Sione. As Royals pack down for the loose head yet again, Brent Hamlin will be hoping for options here, and they've spread themselves nice and wide, a bit too far from the line to use their forward power to drive over, so expect them to throw it. Got uh, Lousy Talia Uli, the big winger out on the left there, ready and rearing. Gungarland looking strong in defence. 16 and a half minutes to go here as the scrum will be repacked. Remember, you can uh, drop us a line on hashtag JIDC16 if you'd like to have your say on today's game using that Twitter hashtag. And there's something going on this side of the scrum. Matt Hogan swaps sides to take a look. I think uh, Ray Dobson's saying that Folletti's pulling him down, so we'll have a look here. Folletti's elbow was up. I don't know how it could be pulling it down from there, but we'll see what... I wonder what Hogan's saying there to the Yeah, it would be great to have the <laughs> mic down on Hogan's mouth, but he's uh, obviously giving a little bit of instruction to the Royals' front rower. A big scrum from Gungalan. Royals will get it away, though, and we're throwing it through to Rolando. Cut out pass to Johnson on the fly. He doesn't get very far, though, because Gungalan had the men in possession. Michael Andrew Copsey caught it off the back of a Ghana kick. He attempted to clear it out there. They're still going, Royals. Tom Staniforth down the short side. They're playing advantage here, I think. Folletti with his first run of the afternoon. And we're going to come back to that penalty you pointed out before, Louise. Quick tap from Brent Hamlin. He loves that. Rolando now has two on the outside. And it was Bodman who was probably playing a little bit too close to him. And Patui Draki gets the steal away. Thrown back to Connor O'Byrne. And O'Byrne attacking the short side. Calls of offside from Gengarland's faithful. Show and go and a kick out on the full doesn't gain many metres and they're all playing advantage there, the referee for offside. So the referee did notice it and they will get a piggyback out and again Royals denied. Fantastic effort from Gungalan this afternoon. They have been brilliant in defence and if they win this game it will be thanks to that effort all afternoon here in the second half. They've been under siege for... Around 17 minutes now. 13 and a half minutes left on the clock as the ball finds the touch line. Yeah, and being one man down as well, you know, that's phenomenal defence there, really putting Royals under pressure. And um, I'm sure Gungalan will be hoping to get it out of their half for, uh, uh, for the first time in a while. And we've got another replacement on now for Royals. Winger George Stewart makes his appearance in this semi final. And Seth Going, who almost had a try. About five minutes ago, he's removed. Gungalan trying to get it out there. I can see Josh Manray directing a bit of traffic out the back, acting scrum half, Connor O'Byrne. And he gets the offload now. And Garner now cut out pass to Dargaville. Pat Tuidraki. Good defence from Royals. They haven't allowed them... To gain many metres, Spongo picks it up and gives it back to Connolly, the intercept, intercept try scorer from before. He left it on the ground there for a moment but realised he wasn't properly tackled so he picked it up again and went himself. And Josh Manray with a run up. Jason Swain juggle does well to push it backwards and Ben Johnson has one to beat and that's a very, very flat pass. The referee wasn't in a good position to rule it. There was a call. And he has ruled that forward pass there from Johnson to Lousy Talia Uli. So a scrum in attacking territory. And with 12 minutes left on the clock, Louise Burrows, it's a long way to uh, come back if Gungalan are able to get themselves over the line here. Well, that's right. Gungalan at the moment are really putting the pressure 
on Royals defensively and they haven't really had much possession. So if they can um, retain possession here for a few phases and um, score some points, yes, I think it might be out of reach for Royals. Still in it though, 17 to 3, 12 minutes to go, an impromptu drinks break. Giving his players a bit of a rest is uh, Ray Dobson on the field there in the 16. Just getting a, uh, an arm attended to. Louise, we've seen um, all sorts of tries scored this season and can Garland host the uh, top try scorer in the competition in Jamie Cotts, who unfortunately had to go away for a family emergency just before the start of the game, so he's not here. He scored 13 tries during the regular season, and the next best uh, was Ernest Suavai with Vikings with eight tries, so a wonderful effort for him throughout yeah, this year, and he no doubt be in the running for the NRC squad. Yeah, I did see your um, highlight package for the uh, best tries of the season. It was quite <laughs> yeah. enjoyable. Catch that on the Echo Sports Network Facebook page where you can catch all the local sport coverage here in Canberra, including the rugby competition. We bring you some of the highlights, including the top 10 tries of this year. That's up there right now, as well as a nice little profile on a local tennis star. And Dan Garner wraps around to Dargaville. Coming away now, Garner and Connolly link up and Duffy is tackled around the legs by Tally Uli, but not before making a few metres. Garner again looks at his options and gives it to Coyle, who's met, met by two big front row forwards. And now Garner again with an intercept attempt from Pedro Rolando, but he'll be pulled back for the knock on. Probably a good decision to go for it because they had a little bit of an overlap on the right-hand side there, Gungarlan. Yeah, he's disappointed knocking that on there, but... Um, Just out of reach. We go back to another scrum. We have had a few this afternoon, you pointed out, Louise. Yeah, there has been quite a few, and, um, you know, I think uh, both both packs have been um, strong at, at their points, um, especially on their own feed, but, um, you know, I think Royals here will be looking to put Gungallan under pressure so that they're not getting any clean ball at the back of the scrum. Mm, that's not fun coming from a front rower when uh, you yeah, hit up the ground and um, have to reset the scrum. You want to hope you've done your neck conditioning <laughs> when that sort of thing happens. That's right. I have a long neck. I would not have no place in any part of the scrum, let alone rugby. Hard game here in Canberra and rivaling some of the best local competitions across the country. Yeah, that's right. I think, um, you know, the Cam John Ident Cup um, is a strong competition and our scrums across um, all the teams in the competition are uh, very strong. And a penalty awarded and Bongo, Josh Man Ray, gives it to fellow Brumby Dargaville on the far side of the field. Caught out in front there. And Gungarn with a short pass now to the big Ray Dobson who absolutely tramples, I think it was McInerney at the bottom there and Tui Draki on the boot with a chase himself, puts all his players on hot side and Ben Johnson touches it down. And cheers from Gungarn's side for what looked like a knock-on call from the referee, but he had his hand up for Royals' feed, so... I think... Did Johnston take the ball into the in goal, perhaps, and it's a five-metre scrum, I think, to go and go. And there now. we go. He just had his hand up on the wrong side. The ball has come back to the replacement scrum half. And Anthony Dawes. No one on this side, on the short side of the field, in defence or attack. Another strong str scrum from Gingalan Eagles and Josh Manray takes it around the right-hand side. 
I apologise, it's not. It's JP Fenikatal. And Dawes gives it to Garner and Tui Draki with that massive right step of his gets another few metres towards the line. And Garner won away to Duffy. Duffy's picked up by an aggressive Johnson. Bongo, Josh Man Ray there, no metres gained. Flat footed Connor O'Burn meets Royals defence and it comes free. Garner on the receiving end of that to Dawes and Coyle ends up with it. Sloppy play from Gingalan, but they've managed to retain possession. Tempers boiling a little bit here. Luke Duffy takes it forwards, but dragged backwards a couple of metres. And the penalty awarded a breakdown to Royals, who should be patted on the back for their defence again. Yeah, some great work at the breakdown by Andrew Copsey there. Two converted tries the margin, so still a lot of the work for, to do for the defending champions. Gingalan will be sitting pretty and happy with their position. Right on the half line mark is where this line out will be played. Connell McInerney to restart for Royals. And Brendan Woodward does very well to get it up, despite the pass being a little bit in Gingarland's favour. A short ball from Bodman to Talia Uli. Nice and flat, and Uli is still going. Still going. Breaks through. A few extra metres. Fantastic drive from the big winger. Looks like they're shaping to go short side, and Hamlin does just that. Another pass from... Stanley Forth obviously getting his confidence back after throwing that attempted cutout which was intercepted by Connolly earlier on this half. Andrew Copsey now. Hamlin with a little flick, cute pass to Swain who's driven back. Great tackle by Duffy there. Wonderful tackle. Takes him back a couple of metres. Cutout pass to Rolando who steps around the big front rower and does well because he would have been cleaned up. And there was a forward pass there. I was about to question as to whether that one went forward and the referee was in good position. He popped it up and it just floated that centimetre or two. And the scrum will be packed down in between the 10 and the halfway. Six and a half minutes left on the clock. 17 to three is the margin. And the, the excitement is building to our right. We have coach Dan Atkins up here near the commentary box. As with the uh, Garland faithful on the right-hand side of our position. Big, uh, big contingent of Eagles here this afternoon. It would be a fairy tale for them if they were able to get up and get through to the next round of the finals. They weren't. Written off last year, they only won three games in 2015. This year they've beaten every team at least once. They come into the final series with a bunch of confidence. They beat Royals most recently out of the teams that have made the finals. It was on a rainy, wet day out at Nichols Oval where it all 38 points were scored on the right side of the field, the southern end of the field. And Hamlin penalised for being offside. He realised his error as his foot stepped over the line and took himself back, put his hands up, but it was enough for the referee to blow his whistle and another opportunity for Duffy to get them deep into attacking territory. Royals with five minutes left on the cock will be hoping for a mistake or two here. A long range try from an intercept perhaps or some piece of magic from their back line is needed to get themselves back in the game now. Time is against them. As Josh Manray gets ready to restart the game here. Down on the sideline, we have Callum Richardson as the ball comes away. We'll get to you in a second, Callum. And 
a good line out from Gingarlan gets them a few extra metres now. A fantastic run and Dobson tries to attack around the ruck. Royals pressure is good. Four and a half minutes left on the clock now. A big run from Xavier Duffy down the short side. Just inside the 22 metre line. Royals coming in from all angles. Over the top. No penalty blown. And a pick and go now. Gungarlan edging closer to the line. And a short pass attempt there from Man Ray, but decided to keep it. Duffy now has options, chooses Coyle. And Dawes gives it back to Fenikatau. Little flick pass, cute pass to Dargaville. In the long shadows of the winter afternoon here in Canberra. It's a chilly afternoon and Gangarnon looking hot. Three and a half minutes left on the clock. On the sideline, Callum. Yeah, I can hear you, mate. Mate, Royals, tense situation. We'll come to you in a second again. And my timing's off again. Sorry, buddy. As we attack the line, Gungarlan look like they've got over the line here. Yeah, another try for Gungarlan. And you can hear the cheers in the background. Fair to say... That here today and I think actually when uh, McGee went off uh, that red card it's really lifted Gungarlan yeah. and um, they lifted the tempo and in, def in defence they've been really phenom phenomenal especially on their own line. There was a 17 minute period there where they were just under siege and repelled attack after attack and when you look back at the highlights of this game make sure you have a look at that defence because that is going to be Attributed to their path to the preliminary final here in 2016 as Luke Duffy lines up the kick. Callum Richardson on the sideline, mate. You're right in front of the Royals camp. Disappointed feeling, I would imagine. Yeah, a lot of deflated faces, Kieran. They're all a bit with how they played today. Considering all the opportunities and all the ball and all the field position that they had, to not even come away with a try is a little bit disappointing for the Royals. And the two points added, so three converted tries the margin. 24 points to three, one and a half minutes left on the clock. That'll be all she wrote for Royals, you would imagine. And you can hear the excitement. After the game to um, have a chat to... Um, yeah, sure. Just to gauge that excitement, because it has been a fairy tale year for them. They weren't expected to go this far, let alone into the preliminary final and a shot at the grand final in 2016. That one caught on the shoulder, and Gungarlan again in the tack. The ball has spilled loose. Royals trying to pick it up. Doesn't matter, because they'll get the loose head. Knock-on awarded against Gungarlan. And my co-commentator up here, Royals legend Louise Burrows must be uh, hard to swallow, hard to watch. Yeah, it's disappointing, you know, as a, as a Royals player. And, you know, I think um, after coming away with the Premiership last year and this year to um, go out this way, um, you know, I think as a club we'll be disappointed. But the good thing is that we've got our Colts into the grand final and us women, we have a chance against the Owls next week to, um, you know, make it into the grand final. So, um We've still got uh, teams playing, but um, I think first grade, you know, as a club, we all look up to our first graders and, um, you know, Southie will be disappointed with today's result. Absolutely. He's had um, a big impact in the culture of this club, Wayne Southwell, and his job now turns to the NRC with the UC Vikings, the head coach there. And a lot of these players on the field today will be in the mix for selection. And that team to be named just after the end of this season. Penalty awarded to Royals and finding a gap there. Just came off a knee. It's continued forward, said the referee. Four pass ruled and Bobman was away. He had Lousy Talia early and without that, it would have been over. The whistle has been blown though. And Gingarlan, they're through to the preliminary final here in 2016 to face the Queenian Whites. 
And the victorious team there will face the Vikings in the grand final of the John Iden Cup. To recap the game here with me is Louise Burrows. Louise, it's a real shame to have to have Royals go from winning the Premiership in such emphatic fashion in 26, 2015 to this year dropping out in the first round of the finals. Yeah, it is. It's disappointing. But, um, you know, I think uh, we'll build on it for next year and um, obviously just see where we, we could have worked on a few different things throughout the season. And, um, you know, Gun Garland were, were great out there today. And I think next Saturday um, you've definitely got a game on your hands with Gun Garland and Queanbeyan. And it'll be exciting to watch. And I hope you at home can join us there. We will be replaying this game in a selected venue yet to be announced. Um, so stay tuned with us on Facebook. You can follow us on the Echo Sports Network, ESN for short. Uh, look us up and you can find out where you can watch the replay of this game. You can, Garland fans will no doubt be enjoying that in the next couple of days. As I see down there, Wayne Southwell and Dan Atkins, the two head coaches, enjoying an embrace. Great sportsmanship between the two sides. And a lot of passion shown here this afternoon. As we said, Ben McGee was given a red card in the second half and that brought the Gungarland Eagles down to 14 men but as you said Louise it lifted them and I think we're going to take a moment in a minute Callum Richardson on the sideline is going to try and find one of the Gungarland players to have a chat to engage that excitement as they head into another week of training and, and the preliminary final but Louise while we wait for that what's your pick for the uh, man of the match? Oh, um, oh, I thought uh, Duffy had a strong game. Um, he certainly had some big kicking and was part of the call all afternoon. Oh, there's two Duffys. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Xavier Duffy or Luke bit. Duffy? Well, I thought the seven Xavier Duffy, um, you know, he was really dominant at the breakdown and defensively made some really crucial tackles. But, um, yeah, Luke Duffy, he was good, uh, good, good with the high ball kicks. Yeah, and I think um, on the Royals side, a lot of credit has to go to the efforts of Brent Hanlon and Pedro Orlando. They had quick ball, but just the sides couldn't um, put it together. And we're going to drop down to the sideline now. On the sideline, we have our sideline eye, and he's grabbed, uh, I think, Luke Duffy down there. Yeah, man, I'm here with Luke Duffy. Luke, fantastic win today. Not even letting in a try. How, how good must that feel? Yeah, mate, it was bloody awesome. We are um, unlucky to lose Ben McGee out there, but we dug deep. 14 players, it was, um, yeah, it was unreal. Yeah, absolutely, that offensive onslaught that the Royals tried to throw at you, how, dig, how deep do you have to dig just to hold them out for that whole period of time? Yeah, mate, we knew it was going to be fucking hard. We've been talking about it all week. <laughs> it's, we haven't made finals for a couple of years, so yeah, it's unreal. Off to Queen Bee next week. What's the game plan for them? Mate, same thing. They're, um, we know how tough and rough they are, so it'll just be a grind all game. Yeah, absolutely. Good luck. Oh, congratulations on the win and good luck next week. Thank you. Thank you to you, Callum Richardson, down on the sideline and, and Luke Duffy there in a retrospective language warning for those of you watching at home. Uh, appreciate the efforts of Luke Duffy to spend some time out and uh, he'll go and celebrate the win now with the rest of his team. And you can see lots of smiles on the faces of the Gengal and Eagles. We're about to sign off here, I reckon. Uh, in the answer to my question before, Louise, I'm probably going to have to award the uh, player of the match um, down to Conor O'Byrne, who was very strong in defence and uh, one of those key players throughout the match, um, and especially in that 17-minute period we've referred to. And, and our sideline commentator, Callum Richardson, made a fantastic point just a moment before that Gungarland kept Royals trialists throughout the afternoon so credit to them louise it's been fantastic calling another game for you not the way of the royals fans and not the dream that they had hoped for but you'll be back next week for the women's game and we look forward to watching that but yeah for sure i can't wait to get back out in the park next week and and see if we can uh, make it into the grand final to defend our title from 2015 Best of luck there, and uh, we'll be watching closely. Thank you for joining me. My name's Kieran Deck, and uh, stay tuned for much more in the next couple of weeks.